This is Adventure for Life. I'm Joel. This is day four of the 15,000 mile cross country trip in the Grenadier. Well, I am in downtown Miami, and today I'm going to Biscayne National Park, but and going to do a boat ride, kind of like I did yesterday, only instead of uh, yesterday's full day trip, this is going to be about a half day trip, and it doesn't start till 1.15, so I'm going to grab lunch beforehand. And even though this isn't on the diners, drive-ins, and dives list, I got a hot tip that Sangich, not sandwich, Sangich, is the place to get a Cuban sandwich. A number one best in the South Florida area. There are several locations of this, so I'm going to go in there and see what it's like. And I love Cuban sandwiches, so I'll let you know. So I just ordered the basic Cuban sandwich, which looks pretty awesome at this moment. And I thought I was ordering French fries, but I actually got sweet potato fries because their menu's in Spanish, I guess. Anyway, I don't typically like sweet potatoes or sweet potato fries, but these were pretty darn good. I ate some as an appetizer, so I'll let you know how it goes. Again, the name of the restaurant is Sangich. I am very glad I took my friend's recommendation. The Cuban sandwich was excellent. And again, I'm not a fan of sweet potatoes or sweet potato fries, but these were seasoned very, very well. They were crispy, which sweet potato fries usually are not. They had some garlic butter sauce that came with it and some honey mustard sauce, and it was fantastic. All right, heading down to the pier so I can get on the boat to go to Biscayne National Park. See you down there. Since I saw one, I thought I'd do a little iguana videoing. So there you go. I've seen several of them. This one's eh, he's a little kind of medium sized or whatever. Seen bigger ones in Cancun for sure. Okay, I am at Pier 9. That says Pier 7. Pier 9 is not marked, but this is where the National Park Tours take off from. So I'm a few minutes early. Wait around here till it's time to get on the boat, but uh, obviously pretty place. Lots of boats. So looking forward to the trip. Okay, I really wasn't expecting some big pontoon boat, but this is what we're taking. We're boarding right now. The good news is it doesn't look like it's very full. So it's not going to be overcrowded and hopefully going to have a good time. I do think we're going to be able to snorkel. I may choose to snorkel, snorkel today, but anyway, we're getting ready to take off, so I'm going to hop on. Okay, it's really windy, so hopefully you can hear this. Uh, we're pulling into this lighthouse here. Uh, we got an American flag outside, so I think we're going to stop at this island and spend a little time here, and I'll video someone once we get on land. By the way, it's been about, no, oh, 45 minute boat ride with not much to see, basically just water. Uh, they did say that the water's only 10 feet deep out here. So the entire time, that whole 45 minutes, we've been just in 10 foot deep water. So the island we were pulling up to is Boca Chita Key. And we are the only boat here. And they said this is extremely rare. Obviously you got these park service boats over here. Maybe that's a private boat over there, but they said typically it's pretty crowded. Uh, anyway, Island was, I'm going to say, quote unquote, originally owned by a guy named Honeywell from the Honeywell Corporation, founded Honeywell Corporation. Uh, all the buildings that are on the island are, I'll do a 360 real quick, are original from the 30s when he owned it. And he's the one that built the quote unquote lighthouse, which has never been lit. Apparently, 
he built it with the intent of signaling people in Miami, hey, here's my island, or come on out, it's party time, or whatever, because he used to hold big events out here and whatnot. Once he built it, apparently from a navigational standpoint, it's on the wrong side of the island, it's in the wrong spot, it's something like that. And so the Coast Guard or the Navy or whoever's in charge of that kind of thing told him he couldn't light it. So there's a lighthouse that's never been lit. All right, so I'm gonna take a walk around and see if there's anything else that's interesting here. We're gonna be here about an hour, they said. A little closer look at the lighthouse. There have been, there's a boat coming into the uh, harbor there. There's three other private boats. So apparently you can spend the night here. I'm guessing the lighthouse has never been lit. I said that earlier and I'm guessing that cannon has never been shot, although it looks like it came off the bottom of the ocean at some point in time. If you can see it right there is downtown Miami. Oh, that's cool. They've been talking about the uh, sea grasses and whatnot. If you can see that, it looks pretty on the ocean floor. Anyway, uh, I would guess, you know, it was probably a 45 minute ride. We were probably going 20, 25 miles an hour. So maybe we're 20 miles from Miami right now again right there downtown Miami I'm gonna take a little walk around this uh, concrete wall that they've built around the edge of the island and we'll see if there's doesn't look like there's a whole lot to do here again this was some rich guys party island and it got handed down to the Park Service maybe 50 years ago or so I don't know that there's much of a claim to fame other than that the uh, Rich guy owned it and put a lighthouse that he never lit on it. But it's pretty out here. It's, it's really nice, it's been enjoyable so far. Here's the other side of the island. Obviously got a little beach here. I'd guess this island's 50, 100 acres, something like that. Interestingly, you can camp here. So if you can see those picnic tables right now, I saw them right there, I saw them labeled up to number nine and each one of them had a National Park Service sign that said uh, campsite. Uh, another interesting tidbit of information. Apparently when uh, Mr. Honeywell bought this piece of property in the 30s, it had an elephant on it. The prior owner of the property had an elephant. And so they just left the elephant on the property and the elephant lived till the mid 80s, I think, and stayed on the property most of that time, eventually got transported to some elephant sanctuary in Ocala. Maybe Big Daddy Don Garlet saw him there, who knows, but anyway. Um, so I'm gonna walk, walk over here and see this more uncleared, wooded area. So that's about it for Boca Cheetah Key. There's the sign for it, Biscayne National Park. Uh, by the way, Biscayne is basically the same as Dry Tortugas in that it's 98% underwater or whatnot. I can't remember how many acres they were, there were, but uh, huge place, but mostly underwater, mostly to preserve, you know, various animals and vegetation, sea vegetation life, that kind of thing. Lots of mosquitoes, by the way, too, so all right, see you at the next stop. Yeah, so if you can see in the distance, there's uh, the lighthouse and that Boca Cheetah Island that we were just at. We basically just put it over here. You know, that's probably half a mile away. Put it over here and did a little, threw out an anchor here. It's very shallow here, maybe six feet, a bunch of seagrass underneath and just snorkeled and enjoyed the water and whatnot. Water was super nice. Not a lot to see other than seagrass and sand, but uh, Anyway, this was the second stop on the trip. Okay, the last stop is Stiltsville. And there's another house back there. There are seven of these houses. There's another one in the distance. There have been as many as 20 or 30 from time to time. 
started back uh, before prohibition so in the early 1900s some guy came out here and said hey I can make money the it's very shallow here so it was easy for him to build and and guy came out here and was selling drinks and and various things to the boaters and then all kinds of things have come since then there have been all kinds of bars and different kinds of establishments out here but now there are only seven of them because the hurricanes come through and wipe them out so you know basically it's just uh, somebody came out here and used the the land used the water for what it was worth and these are the remnants of it there are still people that own these properties or actually have a lease on them kind of a weird thing but uh, kind of neat uh, I don't imagine you're gonna find this in very many other places okay so we're back at the dock the day's over I would say you know this trip was it's a half a day it was put on by the National Park Service it was good it was nowhere near as enjoyable as the dry tortugas thing but uh certainly worth doing the dry tortugas i think was 200 bucks this was plus 50 dollars worth of parking and this was 100 bucks plus oh probably 30 dollars worth of parking so anyway no matter what it cost was it worth the time yeah if you're gonna try to see biscayne national park this is probably the best way to do it again uh, Biscayne National Park is 98% water, so there's really not a lot of things to see, but got to spend half a day on the water and, and enjoyed it. So that's the end of today. I'll be spending tomorrow in the Everglades, going to do an airboat ride, so I'll shoot some video of that. Appreciate you guys coming along, and I'll see y'all next week.